My dear brothers and sisters, this life that we live in is one of test and trial. And one of the biggest tests that we face in our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is that struggle that takes place with our nafs and wanting to disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so sinning in and of itself is not the problem. But rather the problem is a lack of feeling remorse after committing the sin. And so my dear brothers and sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is great. And He only swears and takes oaths by that which is great. In the Quran, whenever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes an oath, He makes an oath by great things. لا أقسم بيوم القيامة Allah swears by the day of judgment. And then right after that, وَلَا أُقْسِمُ بِالنَّفْسِ اللَّوَّامَةِ And I swear by the soul that blames itself. This soul that is constantly blaming itself over everything it does, everything that it says, this soul that whenever it commits a sin, it feels something. And so it blames itself. Why did I do this? Today, why did I commit this sin? Why did I lie? Why did I backbite? Why did I steal? Why did I commit zina? Why did I do this and that? blaming itself. And so my dear brothers and sisters, this feeling of regret and remorse, this is a sign of your Iman in your heart. وَالَّذِينَ إِذَا فَعَلُوا فَاحِشَةً أَوْ ظَلَمُوا أَنفُسَهُمْ ذَكَرُوا اللَّهِ Those who when they commit evil, when they commit a fahisha, when they oppress themselves, when they do injustice to themselves, what do they do? Straight away they remember Allah. ذَكَرُوا اللَّهَ فَاسْتَغْفَرُوا لِذُنُوبِهِمْ They remember Allah and then they turn to Allah seeking His forgiveness. وَمَنْ يَغْفِرُ الذُّنُوبَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ وَلَمْ يُصِرُّوا عَلَى مَا فَعَلُوا وَهُمْ يَعْلَمُونَ And who forgives sins besides Allah? And then they do not persist in those sins as long as they know. Meaning they don't persist in those sins knowingly. If they return to those sins, it's because of their heedlessness. It's because they have forgotten that repentance that they made with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so my dear brothers and sisters, the problem is not in committing sin. The problem is in what we do after committing the sin. Will we persist in it? Or will we feel remorse and turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Kullu bani Adam khattat That every single son of Adam is not just a sinner, but rather a frequent sinner. al khatta means a frequent sinner. We all frequently disobey Allah. That is the nature of us human beings, to commit sins, to make mistakes, to slip. But what did he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam say after that? وَخَيْرُ الْخَطَّائِينَ التَّوَّابُونَ 
that the best of those who frequently sin are those who frequently turn to Allah in repentance. My dear brothers and sisters, Abu Ayyub al-Ansari radiallahu an, he narrates that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, لَوْ أَنَّكُمْ لَمْ تَكُنْ لَكُمْ ذُنُوبِ يَغْفِرُهَا اللَّهُ لَكُمْ If you did not have sins, for Allah to forgive you for those sins, لَجَاءَ اللَّهُ بِقَوْمٍ لَهُمْ ذُنُوبِ يَغْفِرُهَا لَهُمْ If you did not have sins that you commit, that you turn to Allah seeking His forgiveness for them, then Allah would have replaced you with the people who do have sins, who do recognize their sins, but they turn to Allah seeking forgiveness for their sins, and so Allah forgives them their sins. It doesn't matter how great our sins are. It doesn't matter how frequently we sin. What matters is how frequently are we turning to Allah in repentance. One day, Hanzala radiallahu an, one of the scribes of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, who was tasked with writing the Qur'an, He was on the streets, he was in the streets of Medina, and he came across Abu Bakr radiallahu an. And so Abu Bakr radiallahu an asked, how are you? How are you, Hanzala? Hanzala replied, Nafaqa Hanzala. Hanzala has become a hypocrite. Abu Bakr radiallahu an, he looked at him and he said, Ma taqul? What are you saying, Hanzala? Hanzala said, Oh Abu Bakr, when we are in the company of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and he tells us about the hellfire, about Jannah, until we see it as if we are seeing Jannah and the hellfire right before our eyes. We feel this sense of Iman. Then we go back to our families and our children and our businesses our day-to-day -day lives. When we leave the company of the Prophet wasallam, we forget about all that he reminded us of. So Abu Bakr radiallahu an, he said to Hanzala, Wallahi, inni la ajudu dalik. He said, I swear by Allah, who is this? Abu Bakr radiallahu an. He said, I swear by Allah, I experienced the same thing. Who is this? It is Abu Bakr radiallahu an. Who this entire ummah, if the iman of Abu Bakr was to be placed on one side of the scale, and the rest of the ummah, their iman was to be placed on the other side of the scale. The Iman of Abu Bakr would weigh more heavy. Hanzala said, let's go to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And so they went. And Hanzala, he said, Ya Rasulullah, nafaqa Hanzala. O Messenger of Allah, Hanzala has become a hypocrite. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam looked at him and said, Wama dak? Why? 
And so Hanzala told him what he told Abu Bakr. He said, Ya Rasulullah, when we are in your company and you tell us about hellfire, you tell us about Jannah, it's as if we see it right before our eyes. But then when we leave your presence, we go to our wives, our children, our day-to-day -day activities. We forget about much of what you have told us. And so the Prophet ﷺ said, وَالَّذِي نَفْسُ مُحَمَّدٍ بِيَدْهِ لَوْ أَنَّكُمْ تَدُومُونَ عَلَى مَا تَكُونُونَ عَلَيْهِ وَفِي الذِّكْرِ he said, I swear by the one in whose hand my soul is. If you were to always remain upon that state, when you are with me, this state of Iman and Yaqeen, in which you are always remembering Allah at every moment, you see Jannah and the hellfire before your eyes. If you are to be in this state at all times, that the angels would meet you and greet you and shake your hands while you're in your beds and while you're in the streets. وَلَكِنْ يَا حَنْظَلَ سَاعَةً وَسَاعَةً But O oh, Hanzala, you have to give time to this and you have to give time to that. Meaning that there is a time for a reminder and being reminded and there is a time to enjoy in your dunya. But that doesn't mean that we forget about Allah to the point where we disobey Allah and we sin and we don't care, and we don't turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in repentance. And so my dear brothers and sisters, so long as you are blaming your nafs constantly, constantly turning to Allah in repentance, then you're on the right path. But if you're not doing that, then although you are physically alive, you are spiritually dead. Although your body is full of life, your heart is dead. And so, if you go to sleep at night and you haven't prayed Salatul Isha, and you wake up, you wake up in the morning, and you go to work, you go to school without praying Fajr. And this is how you live. Not feeling anything inside of you, blaming yourself. And this is a sign that your heart is dead. If you're looking at haram, listening to haram, without feeling any remorse inside of you, what have I done? Then your heart is dead. If you're always lying, backbiting, speaking haram, without feeling any remorse inside of you, without blaming yourself, what have I done? Then your heart is dead. Don't be saddened, my dear brothers and sisters. Do not be saddened if you are slow upon this path. This path to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you are treading. Don't be saddened if you're slow. Don't feel saddened if there are hurdles in your path. You are better than the one who has stopped completely from proceeding to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You are far better than the one whose legs are paralyzed and he's not moving forward. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says, Man taqarraba minni shibra, taqarrabtu minhu dhira'a. 
whoever comes near to me by, an, by a hand span, I come near to him by an arm span. وَمَنْ تَقَرَّبَ مِنِّي ذِي رَاعَا تَقَرَّبْتُ مِنْهُ تَقَرَّبْتُ مِنْهُ بَاعَا And whoever comes near to me by an arm span, I come near to him by a fathom, by six feet. وَمَنْ أَتَانِي يَمْشِي أَتَيْتُهُ هَرْوَلَا And whoever comes to me walking, I come to him running. بارك الله لي ولكم في القرآن العظيم ونفعني وإياكم بما فيه من الآيات والذكر الحكيم أقول ما تسمعون وأستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين من كل ذنب وخطيئة فاستغفروه إنه كان غفارا وتوبوا إليه إنه كان توابا الحمد لله على إحسانه والشكر له على على توفيقه وامتنانه وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له تعظيما لشأنه وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله الداعي إلى رضوانه صلى الله وسلم وبارك عليه وعلى آله وإخوانه وخلانه ومن سار على نهجه واقتفى أثره إلى يوم الدين فاتقوا الله عباد الله اتقوا الله في السر والنجوى يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله ولتنظر ما نفس ما قدمت لغد واتقوا الله إن الله خبير بما تعملون My dear brothers and sisters if you are someone who commit sins and have become so accustomed to committing these sins that you no longer feel remorse inside of you because when you commit a sin for the first time you feel the pain you feel that remorse you feel that regret what have I done? You remember Allah. You realize that Allah has been watching you. You realize the punishment that awaits you. You feel the anger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon you. And so you turn to Allah in repentance. But then after that, if you return to the sin, a second time, a third time, a fourth time, you keep on going back to it. That sense of remorse, that pain starts to weaken. You're, you become accustomed to it. You become used to it. Until there comes a time when that pain goes away completely. And you no longer feel any remorse in you. Any regret in you for that sin. If you are of such people, then beware. Beware because you have been stripped. You have been stripped of the most valuable thing to the believer. And that is ma'rifatullah. Knowledge of Allah. Yes. You are ignorant about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ignorant of who Allah is. Ignorant of the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. His names, His attributes. You are ignorant about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because your proportion of ignorance of Allah is in proportion to you disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And in proportion of your, heedless, of your heedlessness of Allah, in proportion to that, is how much you feel Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala watching you. 
And so if you don't feel any sense of Allah watching you, then this is a sign of your heedlessness of Allah and your lack of knowing who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is. My dear brothers and sisters, when does our veneration of Allah, when does it appear? This concept of the ta'zeem of Allah, when does it appear? It appears at the time of committing sin and right after it. And so if you commit a sin and you don't care and you're heedless and you don't feel the pain, then it shows that you don't venerate Allah. You don't have any respect for Allah. But if after committing the sin, you feel the pain, you feel the remorse, then this shows your veneration of Allah. This shows how much you truly value Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala stands in your heart. Ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu, he says that the believer, he sees his sins like a mountain that is about to collapse upon him. Whereas the wicked, the fajr, he looks at his sins like a fly that comes across his nose and he swipes away at it. It's no big deal. It's only something small. It's not a big deal. And so my dear brothers and sisters, wake up from our heedlessness. It is time for us to wake up from this state of heedlessness. And this state of not venerating Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in our hearts. It is time for us to turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in true repentance. And one of the conditions and pillars of a true repentance is that you feel remorse and regret over the sin that you committed. And beware, beware of a day that will come when you wish that you can go back and turn to Allah in repentance. But it will be too late. وَلَيْسَتِ التَّوْبَةُ لِلَّذِينَ يَعْمَلُونَ السَّيِّئَاتِ حَتَّى إِذَا حَضَرَ أَحَدَهُمُ الْمَوْتُ قَالَ إِنِّي تُبْتُ الْآنِ And repentance is not for those who commit sins and then when death comes to one of them they say, Oh Allah, now I repent. Now it's too late. Why? Because the Prophet ﷺ said that tawbah is available for all of us except when the soul starts to leave the body. And so at that time, it's too late. Why? Because now you see everything in front of you. You see the angel of death, which you can never see in this life because the angels are from the world of the unseen. But now you've moved on to the world of the unseen. You're no longer a person of this dunya. You are now a person of the akhirah. You see the angel coming to take away your soul. It's too late now. The soul is coming out of your body. It's too late. Just like Fir'aun, when he was drowning, he said, now I believe in the Lord of Musa and Banu Israel. Now, it's too late now. It's too late now. Why? Because now you're dying. Now you see the angels coming to take away the soul, your soul right before your eyes. It's too late now. And that time, 
can come at any moment. The angel of death, when he comes, he doesn't come with an appointment. When he comes knocking on our doors, he comes without an appointment. Don't think that you have a long life ahead of you. Don't think that when I am 60, 70 years old, then I will turn to Allah in repentance. Then I will leave my life of sin. Then I will worship Allah. That day may never come. You could die today. You could die tomorrow. You could die next week. You could die young. You could die old. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us from among his frequently remembering slaves and to make us from among those who frequently repent and seek his forgiveness. Allahumma ghfir lil muslimina wal muslimat wal mu'minina wal mu'minat al ahya'i minhum wal amwat innaka sami'un qareebun mujib al da'awat اللهم انصر إخواننا المسلمين المستضعفين في كل مكان اللهم انصرهم وعجل بنصرهم يا قوي يا عزيز ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار ربنا تقبل منا إنك أنت السميع العليم وتب علينا إنك أنت التواب الرحيم إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعيذكم لعلكم تذكرون فاذكروا الله العظيم الجليل يذكركم واشكروه على نعمه يزدكم ولا ذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون